decided to become a registered dietitian after having some personal experiences with food challenges and going through my education, I was just looking for a way to pursue how to give back for all the people that had contributed to helping me with my well-being and my family with their well-being. Um, so I thought that this would be a great opportunity of a way to serve the community as well as filling my own bucket and my own happiness. It gives me so much pleasure and joy to see patients with food allergies who come in with these really restricted diets and are feeling a little bit maybe nervous or anxious um, and really help them grab onto those those feelings and turn them into something that's purposeful and also fills their bucket because they can find some joy and quality of life with the small changes that we'll make to help them manage their allergies um, by keeping them safe but also happy, healthy, and well nourished. Serving the community as a registered dietitian specialized in food allergies allows for an amazing opportunity for me to help yourself or your family with the allergies that you're facing. So let's say for example you make an appointment with me and you've been told by your physician that you need to avoid milk, egg, and peanuts. When you come in to meet with me, the first place that we're going to start is, well, what are you eating right now? Let's just talk about where you are, what you're eating, what you like to eat, what's your lifestyle like? Do you travel for work? Do you, are you in the building for school? Are you homeschooled? So just trying to navigate your day-to-day -day living so that all of those recommendations are applicable for you. So if you were to come in and you said that we needed to avoid these foods, we've conquered what do you eat, we've conquered what your day looks like, so now we have to tease out how are we going to help to keep you safe, but really make this work for you. So if you're packing a lunch in the morning, do we need to have a cooler or a thermos? And what are we going to pack in that cooler or thermos? Maybe I'm going to recommend um, an appropriate milk alternative. And we might have to try a few different milk alternatives before you find what you like, but I'm here to give you choices and options and tell you why this one over that one. And maybe you love the not so nutritionally dense one, that's fine. So then on the other side of that, we'll make a different change to the foods that you're eating to make sure that we fill in that nutritional gap. So it really is to take you from one side of the bridge to the other side of the bridge, taking those nutritional gaps, crossing the bridge with some slow changes to help you modify your diet that's appropriate for your lifestyle. Then when we get to the other side of the bridge, you're at a nutritious, dense diet that keeps you happy and is completely practical for your day to day. I have the pleasure of seeing a variety of different types of patients. So if you are wanting to see me because maybe your child's having some difficulty with weight gain, or maybe your child has gained a little bit more weight and it's concerning to the pediatrician, I would be so happy to help you meet those goals for weight. Something that's really vital and I cherish about my job is that food allergy children, um, we often see growth stunting before we see weight loss or growth faltering and I have the luxury of helping to make sure that you're as tall as you were meant to be from birth to make sure you're getting enough nutrition to grow um, adequately and optimize your nutrition. Also we have a lot of um, siblings of the allergic kids that come in if you're concerned about how do I feed my non-allergic infant because you've had an experience with an older sibling or another family member, I would be so happy to make sure that you feel confident and comfortable feeding your non-allergic infant um, so that we can start introducing these foods into their diet while still keeping the allergic sibling safe. 